Okay, uh, we thought we'd do a quick video on diagnosing your ignition systems. Uh, in this case, this ignition system, common to a lot of V8 engines, has a distributor, an amplifier, in lots of cases with our upgraded A&R amplifier, and then a coil, and obviously a magna cool leads and spark plugs. So, um, first thing we always do is check we've got 12 volts at the coil. Just before that though, I'd actually ask you to check what connections you've actually got on your coil. So, obviously you should have power ignition in, which we have on this terminal here. Uh, this red wire here is what's powering our amplifier. So, you would actually have a cable going to either the RPI amplifier or the standard black amplifier on the side of the Dizzy or the versions of that Rover did. And then on the negative side of the coil, you have the brown wire. Can you pick it up or is it too dark? Yep, no, it's there. Yep. Um, the brown wire, which is what triggers the coil from our amplifier. And then on an EFI engine, you have a black and white wire as well, which is what triggers the ECU for a hot wire injection system. Or you might have an RPM signal feed as well, or a C signal feed to an LPG system. For now, for testing, we're going to disconnect everything off the negative side of the coil, apart from the brown wire. That means that nothing else is going to interfere with our ignition system. On the positive side, lots of people I've seen run uh, switches for fans or fuel pumps etc. Very bad idea because it's stealing potential energy from the supply to the coil. Your coil should be a nice clean feed. So, uh, voltmeter, or uh, we're here we've got a digital multimeter set to voltage DC and we're just going to earth out onto the top of the plenum and go to the positive post on the coil there and Steve if you can go ignition on We've got 12.3 volts there. Also worth noting, you should check the voltage at the battery is roughly the same. So within 0.1 or 0.2 of a volt, obviously if you've got 11.8 volts here and you've got 12.5 or, or maybe 13 volts because the battery's just been charged at the battery terminals, that's a, a big difference, which could mean you've got broken wires from the ignition to your coil. So we know we've got 12 volts to the coil. The next thing is, can we generate a spark? Um, you've already determined you've got no spark because the common thing, ignition off is fine, please, Steve, yep. So most people would pull a spark plug off, this number two plug lead here, put a spark plug in, rest it on the plenum chamber, crank the engine over, have someone crank it over and go, oh, I've got no spark. Okay, yep, no problem. This is what we're doing these tests for. So let's pop that back on there, otherwise it's a V7. Okay. So we're going to test the amplifier and the coil together, eliminating the distributor entirely. So the way we do that is follow the HT lead from the coil, or the king lead, and follow that down. It should go to the centre post of the distributor. If it doesn't, you found your problem. Pull that off, and we're going to pop a spark plug in there. Oh, hold on. Do you want my piston? You can use a piston for that. Oh, you can use a piston for yeah, yeah, yeah. testing spark, yeah, can't you? Multi-use. Yeah. So um, powder-coated pistons, you've all seen these before in our videos. This one we've actually rigged up as a spark plug tester. Chris invented this some time ago. So um, it earths out through a cable. So we can just connect that to an earth. Down here should be fine. And then we should get a nice picture of the spark down there for the camera lens. So we're gonna connect our coil lead onto there. One tip if you don't have a piston for checking spark is to use a jumper cable and obviously clamp this onto an earth point one end and then clamp your spark plug in the other end. So those of you that aren't lucky enough to have powder coated pistons, that's one way of doing it. So, um, the next thing we need to do for this test is the two wires that plug into the side of the distributor that trigger our amplifier, the blue and red one down here, um, which you can't see because it's a bit dark, but I'm just going to pull them out so you can. There those are. two there. We can forget the blue one. We're just going to trigger the amplifier and coil with the red one. So I'm going to tap this on and off a post of an earth. We have to top it on and tap it on and off. It's no good just holding it on. We will not generate a spark. So Steve, can you go ignition on, please? Yep. So every time I tap this on and off, we will generate a spark, which hopefully the camera is picking up. Yeah, it's lovely. Excellent. This is the second time we've done this video because the first time it didn't. The third, because the first time you missed up. Oh, okay, yeah, third time. I wasn't going to mention that. Right, so that proves that the coil and the spark plug 
are working. Uh, sorry, coil and spark plug. Well, it is the coil and am, the coil and amplifier are working together. Obviously, if yours fails that test, then we need to move to the next step of determining whether it's the amplifier or the coil. Steve, can you go ignition off, please? So, to test the coil individually, what we can do is remove the brown wire from the negative side of the coil, which should leave nothing connected on the negative side of the coil. So all we're going to do is have 12 volts on here, and on the negative side, we are going to trigger it manually. Now, we don't generate a massive spark doing it this way because we don't give it a very clean trigger. Uh, the amplifier obviously gives it a real nice digital on-off, whereas my arm is analog, not digital. And I'm just going to, with this wire, again, on an earth post, tap it on and off. Hopefully you will see a very weak spark there. The fact it's weak is not really relative because it's just the way we're triggering it. But Steve, ignition on, please. So just tapping on and off here. You can see down there, hopefully, a really small spark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that proves that the coil is working independently of everything else other than the power supply, which is obviously the ignition switch. If the coil is working but you're not getting the result from the amplifier, obviously send it back to us, we'll run it up on our test bird, we'll uh, take the cover off and see what the fault is. Um, other things to check, um, we have had customers say, oh, engine starts great, lovely, you know, I've had your system on my car for six or seven years now, but I go down the road and after 10, 15 minutes, my car dies. Um, one real good test to do there is actually vehicle wiring. Again, these tests are more for if your car doesn't start at all, you've got no spark. But if your car is dying over time and you, you're certain it's ignition fault because you go and crank it straight away with a spark plug and you've got no spark until it's cooled down again, one thing now these vehicles are getting older is ignition wiring. So what's powering the positive side of this coil? And we've had lots of scenarios now where actually ignition barrels, the contacts are getting dirty on them and therefore they're not supplying a decent power to the coil. Um, so one way I'll get customers to check for that is to run a new cable from the battery to the coil via a switch in the cabin because that's obviously your new ignition switch and more often than not that cures the fault and it proves that there's a fault on the vehicle wiring or the ignition barrel. I think that covers everything. Yeah. So how do you test for spark? You use a piston. <laughs>